It seems like every time I open the Facebook group settings, they are adding new things. So I thought this would be a great walkthrough. By the time we're done, you'll know exactly what all of the settings options are in a Facebook group. For example, did you know you can choose which types of posts your members in the group can make? Or that some groups can have a prayer option? Or that you can let people post anonymously? Let's get into it. Hey, welcome to 5-Minute Social Media, where we help overwhelmed business owners become streamlined entrepreneurs by helping cut their social media workloads by 50 to 80%. If that sounds like something you'd like to become, take a second, hit subscribe, click that bell, that way you'll be notified each week when we release another helpful video. Also, if you're having any struggles with your social media at all, I want to give you this, my social media quick fix guide, whether you're struggling with engagement, reach, getting people to buy. Uh, normally this is $19, it's free for my YouTube community, and I'll tell you how to get that at the end of this video. My name is Jerry Potter. Yes, it rhymes with the boy wizard. And today we're talking about Facebook group settings, which keep getting expanded. So from your Facebook group, and I'm here on our free five minute social media community, which you can search for if you'd like to join, but all of your options are over here on the left. And I'm gonna scroll all the way to the bottom. And on this one, it's the second to the last one settings. And I click on that. And now let's walk through these settings. And some of these you've probably seen before, and I swear every time I open Facebook groups, they've added something new. So some of them may be new to you. So the first thing is the name and the description. And you probably put these in when you first set up your group, but I click on that and you can have the name of your group along with the description. One thing to know about the description and the name is if your group is private, this is the only thing people can see pretty much until they are a member of your group. So write this in a way that it's going to appeal to people who are not yet members, but maybe are considering becoming a member. Next up is privacy. And because this is a private group and always has been, and it's gotten to a certain size, you can no longer change it to be a public group. But if your group is public, you can change it to private, but they won't let you go the other direction because if somebody joins a group and it's private and they share certain things in there, they don't want it to be turned back public if that person didn't want that stuff to be seen by the public. But basically it comes down to in a public group, people can read all the posts without joining. And in a private group, they can't see anything until they become a member. Next up is the visibility of the group. So it says hide group. So you can have it be visible, which means anyone can find the group or hidden, meaning you have to actually send a personal invitation to people to actually join the group. Location is just something that you can add if you are a group tied to a certain country or city or region. And then tags, if you wanna increase the opportunity to be discovered, you can come in here and see if there are any tags that are relevant for your group. So for our five minute social media community, I mean, I suppose I could tag business, finance, and econ, but I don't know, that just doesn't quite feel right. So I don't have any tags in there. The web address, this is where you can customize what's gonna come up after facebook.com slash groups. So for this one, we just have it as five minute social media. As you can see here, once your group has more than 5,000 members, you can't change this again. So make sure you get that right. The group color, you can choose different colors that you want your group to be. This first option actually will take colors from your cover photo and try and make the rest of the group match. But if you have a significant color that you use in your brand, then you can might be able to choose it here if one of these is close. Badges are little icons that show up next to people in the group. For example, some of these are usually turned on by default, but you've got admin, moderator, group expert. This is a relatively new one, but for people who answer questions a lot, then somebody who's an admin in the group can designate them an expert. And lately I've been seeing it pop up when somebody comments, do you wanna make this person an expert? People get labeled as a new member for the first two weeks, rising star for new members who make engaging posts. So you can read the rest of these, but you can have these turned on or off in your group. Group affiliation is basically any pages that your group is attached to. So mine is affiliated to my personal profile, my main business page, and then I still have an older business page in here. And then group type, general is the default, but you also have buy and sell, gaming, social learning, jobs, and parenting. Uh, parenting is one of the groups where you can have the anonymous posting option, although they seem to be testing that in more and more groups. So, But you can choose the one that's most relevant for you. For most groups, it is gonna be general. Next up is the features section, and the first one is rooms. And by the way, let me just point this out. You may or may not see these in your groups, and the reason for this is sometimes the features vary depending on the type of group you have, the region of the world that you're in, or 
something that might just be tested, and by the time you watch this, it's not there anymore. So if there's anything missing, you can go ahead and just let us know down in the comments. Rooms is basically Facebook's group video chat, kind of like a Zoom call would be. And so if you want your members to be able to do Rooms, you can click on that and turn it on. Anonymous posting. This is where you can let people post anonymously in the group without their name. Now you should know, as the admin, you'll still be able to see their name, but others won't be able to see their names. So if you are in a world, a sense of an industry, something where you really want people to feel comfortable sharing, but they're not willing to share under their regular name, you can turn this on, and then people can go ahead and post anonymously. Mentorship is a feature I haven't done a lot with, but if you see it in there, you can click here to learn more about it. But it's a way for one group member to be aligned with another group member in a sort of mentor-mentee relationship, and you can hit add if you wanna turn that on. Guides are a great way to organize your content in a Facebook group, especially the more content that you have. And I've got a link up on the screen right now. If you wanna learn more about guides, I'll also include it in the description of this video. Just below that, this is if you want to be able to have your members show progress. So in other words, if you had, let's say, five lesson series under guides, this way people could go through and say, yep, I've watched that one and market is done. And then when they come back, they know where to pick up. Host to Q&A, this is just another feature that is in groups where you can have an interactive post where people share their expertise and different people can answer different questions. And you can decide if you want it on and then if it's only admins and moderators or if anyone in the group can host the Q&A. And then tag products. If you have a Facebook shop, this is an opportunity to tag a product that you might be selling in an image in your Facebook group, and you can turn that on. Next up is managing the membership. So the first question is, who do you want to join the group? Only profiles, or do you want business pages to be allowed in the group? Now for this community, I have it only profiles because this is a place for individuals to get together and have conversation. Next up, who can approve member requests? So in some groups, if they're gigantic, uh, people will have it where people can approve their friends to join the group. So that's that first option. In here, it's only admins and moderators. And then who is pre-approved to join? So if you have people in another Facebook group, then you can make it so they can automatically join this one. So I've had some pop-up groups for some other programs that I've run. And so if somebody is already in one of those groups, then they can automatically join this group without having to be approved. And then also, this has been hit and miss when I've used it, but let's say you have a bunch of people coming into a group. You can upload a list of email addresses to pre-approve people on Facebook that have those email addresses. Unfortunately, it would have to be, like the email address you have for them has to be the same one attached to their Facebook account. And as Facebook gets older, that's often not the case. The next section is manage discussion. So first one is who can post, anyone in the group. This is one that I strongly recommend having on unless you're just having it as, as a place to make announcements. Then you can do only admins and then people can comment, but they can't do their original posting. Under that, approve all member posts. So if you want to approve every post before it goes up, and again, I can tell you from experience, this really discourages engagement in your group. So unless you have a good reason, uh, I recommend leaving that off until you have a big problem and then you could come back and turn it on. Sort comments. This is one I know sometimes people get frustrated where it's like, why aren't they showing the comments in the right order? Well, you can come in here and make it the default on posts. So the suggested default is basically it shows uh, the most popular comments first. You can also do most recent or you can show all comments in chronological order, including potential spam. Now, people can go in still and sort the comments how they want on their end, but this will be the default for that. And I know sometimes I see a comment highlighted and that makes me actually read the post because it's from a friend of mine, and so that's why I like this suggested default. Approve edits. This is if people go in and edit their post, then you have to approve it, um, or you can let them edit their post directly. This is one of those things that I'm leaving on. They can edit directly, but the first time we had an issue, I would probably go in and switch to the other option. Now, post shortcuts. This is kind of cool. You can decide which post shortcuts show up for people when they go to post in your group. So these are the post shortcuts in my group right now, live video, photo video, or poll. And then if somebody clicks in, then they can go to all of these and click on the three dots and get to all of the different options. So here in settings, I can click to edit that and you can see live, photo, and poll are the three shortcuts. 
I can click on that and I can choose to have a different shortcut or I can delete it entirely. Unfortunately, they won't let you choose whatever you want. I'm gonna go ahead and take out live actually while I'm here and oh, I can see live's the only one they're letting me put back in. So um, you do not have all of the options uh, that you would like unfortunately. But the next one down is post formats. So in here, you have all of the different options that people can use. These ones come with every group no matter what. These ones you can actually customize. So for example, if you don't want people to be able to go live in your group, you can turn that off. If you don't want people to use rooms, that's turned off because I have rooms turned off in this group. So these are all different things, but you can come through and customize anything that you don't want turned on. And finally, at the bottom, manage advanced settings, linked pages. So I have two Facebook business pages linked to the group here, my main business page and an older business page that I had. Recommended groups, if you want to recommend groups that you want your members to know about, you can, uh, other groups that you are part of, you can include there. And then apps, this is something where if you're using a third-party app in here, so for example, if we go in, you'll see BeLive and Restream. Those are both apps that I use to stream to the Facebook group. And once they're set up, this is where you come in and remove them if you don't want them in there anymore. Or if you don't have any apps but you want to add some, you can click Add Apps, and it brings this up, and then you can search for all of the apps that you want to add in here. Just make sure to pay attention to the... Uh, permissions that you're giving it when you do that. So those are the Facebook group settings, and if you've got other questions, you can go ahead and drop them in the comments, or check the description of this video for additional tutorials all about Facebook groups. And as promised, if you are struggling with engagement, reach, sales, any of the big frustrating things about social media, I want to offer you this, the Social Media Quick Fix Guide. Normally this is $19, but I've decided to offer it to my YouTube family for free, so you can get it by using the link on the screen or in the description of this video. Thank you for watching today. You're not only supporting me, but also my two tiny superheroes at home. And if you're looking for more help growing your business with social media, check out the video on the screen right now.